yeah, I don't really know what to build this month. I didn't get parts for anything. I don't know what I'm doing. The month is almost over. But you know, I have been using Unity a lot in some of my recent videos. So why not make a game since that's what Unity is for? It's also something that I'd say I'm fairly decent at. But what kind of game? Some kind of awesome first person shooter or 2D top down adventure game. No, I really don't have time for any of that. Uh, so I'm actually just gonna remake an existing game and one that I really think needs the remake. I'm talking about the classic Minesweeper. And it's not Minecraft, okay? It's a different game and it's better, okay? It's like Minecraft, but it's in two dimensions. And every time you dig for something, you either get nothing or you get blown up by a mine. I just wanna play a classic casual game that was free with Windows for literally 20 years, but now all they give me is this. What is all this Xbox integration, ads, premium version, themes? Oh, themes are okay. Achievements, I don't need RPG elements in my Minesweeper, okay? I just wanna click on some buttons and blow up the mines or put flags on the mines. Oh, I lost, dang it. All this animation, I gotta wait forever. Is this what people want? Loading screens in their simple little casual game? It just takes so long to reset and play another round. Why would I wanna spend my time waiting when I'm trying to use this, I just, I just wanna play. It's the simplest game ever. Oh, here we go. Now I've played too many times and I gotta watch a stupid video before I can even keep playing. So obviously the internet has nothing to offer me to play this game in any other way that is free of ads and all this extra junk. That's sarcasm, okay? Before the comments fill up with it, I know there are alternatives to playing Minesweeper besides the terrible Windows version, okay? So anyway, the only choice I have clearly is to just rebuild this whole game from scratch in Unity. So let's get started. So I realize that everybody might not know how Minesweeper works. Uh, it actually stopped being included in Windows way back in 2012. That's almost 10 years ago. I feel old. But anyway, the point of the game is to clear every space on the field that is not a mine. If you clear a mine, you will lose the game instantly. And you just clear them by clicking the buttons. And then you get this set of numbers. So this is probably what threw a lot of kids off and made them not want to play because they were like, what the heck does any of this even mean? But it's simple. Each number is just telling you how many mines this space is touching. So this space right up here is touching one mine. This one is also touching one mine. This space is touching two mines. And because I know that this space here is touching one mine, and I know that there's only one space it's touching, this must be a mine. So you just use your deduction and logic skills uh, to figure out where each mine is, and you can right click to add the flags. And you notice that some of these spaces got cleared in big chunks, and that's because the space that I clicked was touching no mines, so the game knows to go ahead and clear everything around it because none of those is mine. Dang, that was a 50-50 shot right there. I really had no other information. Just had to take a guess, and unfortunately, I guessed wrong. Minesweeper is pretty much just a grid of buttons, right? And in Unity, we have that right here. Then we just add some buttons. And I think we're done. Minesweeper, I think, is a pretty good example of a practical use of recursion. And if you don't know, recursion is just where you have a function that calls itself. And to avoid an infinite loop, you have some sort of end condition which stops the function from being called. If I click on a space, then I'm going to check on how many mines surround that space. Okay, so this one has two around it. Not great for my example. I wanted one with zero. Okay, so this space had zero mines surrounding it. So that means that in the code, I'm actually going to simulate clicking on all of the spaces around this uh, to see how many mines each one of those has. That's where the recursion comes from. Well, now my code is going to loop through each of these spaces and click them as well. And for any of those, which also had zero, it's going to loop around the remaining ones that are still at zero.
Yeah, so doing that manually is pretty time consuming and tedious. But the code will handle this in the end and it will appear to happen instantaneously. Let's take a quick look. Look at that. Something is wrong with this algorithm. That should never happen in Minesweeper. Neither should that. That's looking a little more accurate. Hey, look at that. That looks like Minesweeper. Unity has its own UI system which handles button clicks and stuff like that, but it really doesn't work the same way as Minesweeper's buttons. In Unity, a button works by detecting a left mouse button click only uh, while the mouse is inside the button, and then without leaving the button, you release the mouse button, and on that release, the event is fired. So whatever action you want to happen when your button is clicked will happen on the release. Uh, Minesweeper has a pretty different way of working. I'm talking about classic Minesweeper. I don't know. Some of the remakes or things like that probably work differently. But in Minesweeper that I'm used to, you can actually click anywhere and mouse over the buttons. And then when you release your mouse click, the button will be clicked. As you can see with this button up here, which is a Unity button, that doesn't work. So in order to do this, I actually wrote my own button class, which I called Multifunction Button. And it gives events for when you press down on the button, when you release the button, and also an event when the button is held. And one more thing I did is I made it so that you can detect left, right, or middle mouse clicks. Because not only are the Minesweeper buttons clicked uh, with the left mouse button in order to check them, you can also place flags and question marks with the right mouse button, and that works differently. It does not work on the button up. It actually works instantly when you press down on the mouse button. So for each button in the minefield, I actually add two instances of the multifunction button class. Uh, one to handle all the left clicking functionality and a second one to handle the right click functionality. Oh boy, it's just 50-50 here. Dang. But yeah, so that's Minesweeper. It's pretty fully featured here. Um, you know, it's got the actual gameplay, and then it's got the menu recreated. Uh, I've even got some custom sounds that I made. Uh-oh, I never put in a sound for the timer. We'll come back to sounds in a minute. 
Um, you got the high scores. You can, of course, set your difficulty or do a custom game. Okay, now we have sound. Isn't that relaxing? Yeah, I made those sounds. They can be found packaged with the source code. So feel free to use them if you want. I would appreciate if you use them that you give me some sort of attribution for them so that people might find my videos. And I did add one feature of my own. So there is actually a color option in the menu and in the original game, it just turns it to like an old school black and white looking version of this. But instead of doing that, I went ahead and made a custom skin uh, for mine. Um, for the custom version, I even made an animated flag. And when you lose, Skulls, of course, it needs to be skulls. And you can switch the scan at any time. So let me show you a little bit about how the style switch stuff works. I made the scriptable objects, which in Unity are just custom assets uh, that can have whatever data you want in them, but they live in the assets folder rather than in your runtime game hierarchy. So I have one, which is the default style. And then I created another one, which is the all parts combined style. Styles just have sets of different attributes. Uh, what do you want images to look like, text to look like, buttons, uh, and then my custom ones, multifunction button and uh, animated images, which I use for the animated flag. And each of these is just a list uh, of different data structures. Uh, so if we take a look, for instance, at uh, the mine under image attributes. Uh, so its ID is called mine. And then I can indicate if I want to set the color of this uh, image to something different and if I want to set the sprite to something different uh, when I switch to this style. Uh, so in this case, I'm only setting the sprite and I'm setting it to this, the mine sprite. Now if we look at the uh, all parts combined style. We look at the mine. Once again, I'm just setting the sprite. And in this case, I'm setting it to the mine APC sprite, which is our skull. And it's similar for text. I just have a bunch of different tagged types of text. Um, and for each of those, I might set the color or the font or the font size. Buttons get a little bit more complicated because you've got either sprite swapping or tinting uh, during the button click transitions. Now, if we look over at the actual game hierarchy, uh, and I'll note that Minesweeper is 100% UI. There's actually nothing happening in 3D space around it. It's just a canvas with some UI elements and that's it. But for every single element in here that I think might change, I have to add corresponding element scripts. Uh, so this one in particular, the restart button has both an image and a button that are going to be changed when the style changes. So I just have to make sure that each of these has a style name, which corresponds to something that was in uh, the style sheet that I set up over here. And that's pretty much how this system works. I think it's pretty nifty. Uh, it's a little bit tedious to get everything set up, but if you're doing any sort of game development for something that uh, is going to include different uh, styles or different skins, uh, this might be a good jumping off point. You can grab the source code down below. Uh, there's a GitHub link there. So if you want to take a look at this and uh, steal any of it for a different game, feel free. You might have noticed that I've been using an online tool called Piskel to do a lot of the artwork for this. Uh, it's a really cool free software. You just use it in your browser. And I'm really no artist. I don't know much about doing uh, pixel artwork or anything like that, but I think I was able to pull it off in this case and get something uh, together that looks kind of nice. And what you see here is my attempt at doing an animated flag. Uh, for the all parts combined skin on the game. If you're interested, I'll put a link to Piskel in the description. So there you have it. 
that's Minesweeper. I mean, it's not perfect down to every last detail, but I think I got it pretty close. Uh, and honestly, I haven't had time to fully test out everything and make sure there are no bugs. But, oh well. If you want to play my version of Minesweeper, I will be putting a link down in the description. And there will also be links to the source code if you want to check that out. If you found this enjoyable or helpful, consider liking and subscribing. You're next. Nah, probably not. So, full disclosure, I've actually already made Minesweeper in the past. I was at a particularly slow internship uh, using MATLAB, and uh, I just had nothing to do, so I made Minesweeper in MATLAB. But the thing is, almost nobody uses MATLAB, so that's not very fun. There's no one I can share that with. So here I am, doing it all over again.